Hello, dear listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the English Learning Podcast. I'm your host, Amelia, and today we're super excited to dive into a topic that's going to help you take your English skills to the next level. That's right. I'm Liam, your co host, and today's episode is all about how to level up your English. We know many of you are working hard to improve, and we're here to give you some practical tips, strategies, and motivation to help you on your language learning journey. Exactly. We'll be breaking down how you can improve your speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills. Plus, we've got a fun real life dialogue coming up between two friends who are working through their own English learning challenges. And stick around, because we'll also be discussing key vocabulary from our conversation. And as always, we'll make sure you walk away with actionable steps to boost your English skills today. Yes! Whether you're a beginner looking for guidance or an advanced learner trying to reach fluency, this episode will give you the tools you need. So, grab your headphones, get comfortable, and let's get started. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and share this episode with your friends who are also learning English. Trust us, they'll thank you for it. Absolutely. And if you find our content helpful, please leave us a review. It helps more people find the show and join our learning community. We'll also have some useful resources and links in the description, so be sure to check those out after the episode. All right, let's get into it. Up next, we're going to talk about practical ways you can level up each area of your English, whether it's speaking, listening, reading, or writing. Stay with us. Okay, let's jump right into today's main topic, how to level up your English. Liam. When we talk about leveling up your English, what do we actually mean? Great question. When we say leveling up, we're talking about improving your skills across the four key areas, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. It's about making progress in each of these areas so you can communicate more effectively and confidently in English. Whether you're just starting out or already advanced, there's always room to grow. Absolutely. And I think the key word here is progress, right? It's not about being perfect, but about getting better every day. So, let's break it down, Liam. What are some practical ways learners can level up their speaking skills? Speaking can be one of the most challenging areas, but also one of the most rewarding. First, I always recommend finding a speaking partner. This could be a friend, a language exchange partner or even joining online communities where you can practice speaking with others. The key is to actually use the language in real-life situations. That's so true. And what if someone doesn't have a speaking partner or is too shy to speak with others? No worries. There are lots of other ways to practice. One great method is recording yourself. You can talk about your day, describe things around you, or even record yourself reading aloud. It helps you get used to speaking English out loud, and you can play it back to hear how you sound. Yes, recording yourself is such a good way to track your progress over time too. Plus, it helps you identify areas where you might want to improve. Now, how about listening skills? What can learners do to level up in that area? Listening is all about exposure. The more English you hear, the better you'll get at understanding it. So. I recommend watching English videos or TV shows, listening to podcasts, or even just playing English music in the background while you go about your day. That's great advice. And I think it's important to remind learners not to be afraid of starting with subtitles or slowing down the audio at first if it's too fast. Gradually, they can work their way up to listening without those aids, right? Exactly. Start with what you're comfortable with and then push yourself little by little. You can also try listening to the same material more than once to catch things you missed the first time. That's a good tip. Repetition really helps solidify new words and phrases. Let's move on to reading skills. What are some practical ways to improve there? Reading every day is key. You don't have to read a whole book in one sitting. Start with something manageable, like articles, blogs, or even social media posts in English. The important thing is to make it a daily habit. 
Yes, and I always tell learners not to shy away from reading things they enjoy, even if it's just short stories or comics. It doesn't have to be academic or boring. Exactly. The more you enjoy what you're reading, the more likely you'll stick with it. Another great strategy is to read aloud sometimes. This helps improve both your reading and speaking at the same time. I love that tip. And now for the final skill, writing. How can learners level up their writing? Writing is all about practice. One of the simplest ways to start is by keeping a journal. Write about your day, your thoughts, or even just simple things like what you ate for breakfast. The more you write, the more natural it becomes. That's such a good point. Writing daily helps build fluency and it's okay to start small. What about learners who want more structured writing practice? Great question. You can set specific writing tasks for yourself, like writing short essays, social media posts, or even responding to questions in English forums. And don't forget, feedback is crucial. If possible, get feedback from a teacher, a native speaker, or even use online tools to check your grammar and structure. Yes, feedback helps you see areas where you can improve, and it can be so encouraging to see your progress. Liam, what would you say to someone who feels overwhelmed by trying to improve all these areas at once? I would say, start small and focus on one area at a time. You don't need to tackle everything all at once. Set realistic goals. For example, focus on improving your listening for a week, then switch to writing the next week. The key is consistency, not perfection. Exactly. And speaking of goals, how can learners set goals that actually help them improve? Great question. Goals should be specific, measurable, and achievable. For example, instead of saying I want to get better at English, you could say I want to practice speaking English for 10 minutes every day this week. When you break it down like that, it's less overwhelming, and you can easily track your progress. That's so helpful. And I love the idea of rewarding yourself when you hit those small milestones. It's a great way to stay motivated. Exactly. Celebrating your progress, even the small wins, keeps you motivated and excited to keep going. Learning English is a journey, and every step forward is a step closer to fluency. Couldn't have said it better myself. So, to recap, Consistent practice, setting realistic goals, and using a variety of resources are key to leveling up your English. Whether it's speaking, listening, reading, or writing, every bit of progress counts. Absolutely. Remember, there's no magic trick to getting better overnight, but with daily practice and the right strategies, you'll see improvement. Keep pushing forward. And with that, Let's move on to a fun real-life conversation between two friends, Sophie and Robin, as they navigate their own English learning challenges. Stay tuned! So, Robin, how's your English practice going? Any progress? Honestly, it's been a bit of a struggle lately. I feel like I've hit a plateau. I'm doing all the usual things, watching videos, reading articles, but I'm not seeing much improvement. It's kind of frustrating. Yeah, I know that feeling. I was in the same boat a few months ago. I felt like I wasn't moving forward no matter how much I practiced. Exactly. It's like I'm stuck at the same level, and no matter how much I study, I'm not getting better. What did you do to get past it? Well, I realized that I wasn't really challenging myself. I was sticking to the same types of materials, watching easy shows and reading simple texts. So I decided to mix things up. Mix things up? How? For starters, I started listening to podcasts that were just a little above my current level. It was tough at first, but I got used to the faster pace and more complex vocabulary. I also pushed myself to read longer articles on topics I wasn't familiar with like science and history. That sounds intense. Did it help? Definitely, it forced me to learn new words and get comfortable with more difficult material. But more importantly, it made me realize that I needed to get out of my comfort zone if I wanted to improve. 
That's a good point. I think I've been playing it too safe, only watching shows and reading things I already understand. But how do you deal with the frustration when you don't understand something? Oh, that happens a lot. But I've learned to embrace it. When I come across a word or phrase I don't know, I write it down and look it up later. Instead of getting frustrated, I see it as a learning opportunity. I'm also learning not to expect perfection. It's okay to not understand everything right away. Yeah, I guess it's better to see those moments as a chance to learn, rather than as a failure. But what about speaking? I still get nervous every time I try to have a conversation in English. I totally get that. I used to be the same way. But here's what helped me. I started having short conversations with myself in English. Sounds weird, but it really builds your confidence. I'd talk about my day, what I was doing, or even practice ordering food. Talking to yourself? I guess that could work. But how do you improve your conversation skills if you don't have anyone to practice with? Well, I do two things. First, I record myself. That way, I can listen back and see how I'm doing. It also helps me notice things like pronunciation and sentence structure. Second, I try to find online language exchange partners. You can find people all over the world who are learning your native language and want to practice English. That sounds like a good idea. I've been meaning to try language exchange, but I've been too nervous to actually do it. You should go for it. It's a safe space to make mistakes, and the other person is usually just as nervous about speaking your language. Plus, it's a great way to meet people from different cultures. Yeah, I think I'll give it a try. I've been avoiding speaking practice for too long, but I know that's what I need to improve the most. Trust me, it makes a big difference. The more you practice, the more natural it feels. And speaking regularly helps you get over that fear of making mistakes. That's true. I need to remind myself that making mistakes is part of the learning process. But what about writing? I feel like my writing is really weak, especially when it comes to structuring my sentences. I had the same issue. What helped me was writing a little bit every day. I started with a journal, just writing a few sentences about my day. Then I moved on to writing short essays on topics I found interesting. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just about getting into the habit. That makes sense. I guess writing every day, even just a little, would help me improve faster. Exactly. And don't forget to get feedback. Whether it's from a teacher, a native speaker, or even using grammar checkers, feedback helps you see where you can improve. Yeah, I've been relying on spell check. But I guess I should get some actual feedback from a person. It really helps. And remember, the key to leveling up is consistency. Even small steps add up over time. Thanks, Sophie. I think I've been focusing too much on the short term frustrations and not enough on the long term progress. I'll definitely try mixing up my practice and challenging myself more. That's the spirit. This is all about pushing yourself and not getting discouraged. You've got this. Thanks for the encouragement. I feel more motivated now to keep going. Anytime. We're in this together. Let's keep leveling up our English. That was a really interesting conversation between Sophie and Robin. They touched on some very common challenges that many English learners face feeling stuck, dealing with frustration, and overcoming the fear of speaking. Let's break down some of the key points from their dialogue. Right, the first thing that stood out to me was Sophie's advice about getting out of your comfort zone. She mentioned how she was sticking to easy materials and not seeing much progress. That's something a lot of learners can relate to. To level up your English, you have to challenge yourself. Whether it's listening to more difficult content, reading more complex texts, or using new vocabulary. Exactly. Sophie talked about listening to podcasts that were slightly above her level. This kind of active engagement really forces you to stretch your abilities. She also mentioned reading articles on topics she wasn't familiar with, like science or history. 
It's important to expose yourself to a variety of subjects in English. It broadens your vocabulary and helps you get comfortable with different kinds of language. Definitely. And then there's Robin's concern about frustration when he doesn't understand something. Sophie had a great response to that. She sees those moments as learning opportunities. Instead of getting discouraged, she writes down new words and looks them up later. That's a proactive approach to learning. Yes, it's all about shifting your mindset. Instead of seeing mistakes or misunderstandings as failures, view them as part of the process. Sophie also emphasized the importance of not aiming for perfection. Language learning is full of mistakes, and that's okay. What matters is that you keep going. Another key point was speaking practice. Robin was nervous about having conversations in English, which is something so many learners experience. Sophie suggested something really helpful, practicing by talking to yourself. It might feel a bit strange at first, but it's a great way to build confidence and get used to speaking English out loud. Yes, and she also mentioned recording herself to analyze her speech. This is a great tip because it helps you notice things like pronunciation and sentence structure, which you might not pick up on in real time. And let's not forget about the language exchange idea. Finding a partner to practice with, whether in person or online, is a fantastic way to improve your speaking skills. You can help each other out, and it's a safe space to make mistakes. Absolutely. Lastly, Sophie talked about the importance of writing every day, even if it's just a little. Keeping a journal or writing short essays can help learners organize their thoughts and practice sentence structure. Robin seemed hesitant about his writing skills, but daily practice can make a huge difference. Consistency really is key. As Sophie said, even small steps add up over time. If you challenge yourself regularly and make a habit of practicing, you'll start to see progress. Exactly. So, the main takeaways from this conversation are, get out of your comfort zone, embrace mistakes as learning opportunities, practice speaking and writing regularly, and be consistent. With these strategies, anyone can level up their English. Couldn't agree more. Now, let's move on to our next segment, where we'll break down some vocabulary from our discussion. Okay. Let's break down some key vocabulary from our discussion. These words and phrases are essential when talking about how to level up your English skills. We've picked out five important ones and we'll explain their meanings and give examples of how you can use them. Let's start with our first word, level up. Level up means to improve or reach a higher level, especially in skills or abilities. In this case, it refers to making progress and learning English. Example sentence. If you want to level up your English, try speaking with native speakers or reading more challenging books. Our next word is progress. This means moving forward or improving in something over time. Example sentence. Even though you may not see it every day, small consistent steps will lead to progress in your English skills. Next, we have exposure. This refers to the amount of time you spend interacting with a new language whether through listening, reading, speaking, or writing. Example sentence. The more exposure you get, the faster your skills will improve. Now let's talk about comfortable. When we say we feel comfortable with something, it means we feel confident or at ease with it. In language learning, being comfortable with the language means you can use it without too much difficulty or nervousness. Example sentence. After practicing for several weeks, I finally felt comfortable speaking English in front of others. Finally, let's talk about consistency. This word means sticking to something regularly and doing it over time. When it comes to language learning, consistency is key to making progress. Example sentence. You don't need to study for hours every day, but consistency is important. So, to recap, the five key vocabulary words we've discussed are level up, progress, exposure, comfortable, and consistency. These are essential words for anyone who wants to improve their English and take it to the next level. Remember to apply these words in your own learning journey. If you're consistent, 
push yourself outside of your comfort zone and get more exposure to English, you'll definitely level up and see the progress you're looking for. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. We've covered some really important strategies for how to level up your English skills, from challenging yourself with more difficult content to increasing your exposure and staying consistent in your practice. That's right. Remember, progress doesn't happen overnight, but by getting out of your comfort zone, embracing mistakes, and practicing regularly, you'll start seeing real improvement. Just keep pushing forward and don't give up. Exactly. Also, we explored the conversation between Sophie and Robin, which gave us some real-life examples of the struggles learners face and how they can overcome them by using practical strategies like self-talk, recording themselves, and language exchanges. So, if you want to take your English to the next level, stay consistent and keep finding new ways to challenge yourself. Whether it's through podcasts, books, or conversations, every bit of practice helps. Before we go, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, share it with your friends, and leave us a review. It really helps us reach more learners like you. Also, be sure to check the description for useful resources and links that can help you level up your English even further. Thank you so much for listening today. We hope you found these tips helpful, and we'll see you in the next episode. Until then, keep practicing, stay motivated, and take your English to the next level. Goodbye. Goodbye.